to be part of this, you know, legacy of leaders. We fully appreciate it. And before we start, let me introduce myself. My, my name is Richard Valley. I'm the speaker of Evolution of Leadership. And as you guys, as you guys know, we would like to provide the value and knowledge about leadership because something that I would like, you know, to emphasize is that we have many leaders in our lives. Um, people that have that have high level of, of popularity, but unfortunately, these type of leaders not always provide, you know, value for community. Sometimes they don't, what they say, um, their advices, their comments, uh, their, you know, when they make live videos, they don't actually provide something positive for, for themselves, for the people and for the community. And besides that, I mean, they're, they're continue uh, being leaders because for the amount of followers they have, the amount of impact that they provide. So it is always good that we need to realize and, and learn how to identify what is gonna be good for us and what is gonna be bad. What path and what advices will, you know, take us for the, for the path of leadership? Because not everything that they provide will provide us something good, something for our personal growth or for our community. Therefore, um, these people, when, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to attack but we can we can identify people that are leaders, but they don't provide something positive for us. They don't provide a, a personal growth. So it, it is always good, you know, to don't follow the crowd that much. It is always good to follow our, our the people that you know we see as our role models. But we need to identify the the value they're providing. We need to identify what are they giving us, what are they providing for the community, you know, because it it will be people like that. So for tonight's event, we have an individual that it happened something similar. Also from my experience that happened too. We were following some crowd that, you know, for the impact that they have, we didn't actually know if they were, you know, providing something positive, something negative. So we get into the idea of confusion. We were like, okay, so this is positive. Should I follow this, this path that they're providing us? Or should I follow this one? It is always good to live from your heart. You know, it is always good to have your own path to have what you what you like, to have, you know, in mind what, what you want to accomplish for life, what you want to provide for you, for your community and for yourself. Because first of all, you need to see for yourself, you need to be good, you need to be a great leader in order, you know, to take your people to follow you, to take your people to follow you. So for tonight's event, we have a best-selling author that the name, it will be Bulletproof Glass, The Seven Secrets to Discover the Unstoppable Leader Within. He started with a story of strategy that he realized that we, he needed to change some aspect in his life. As I said, he was following some crowd that perhaps he realized that this crowd wasn't giving something positive to him, something that, that will change his mind and accomplish you know, his, his goals. So he get a, 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 this, posi this positive impact and he started changing all, all, all this situation and he started going into his path, into his, he made an intervention to be successful. So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you with Mr. Glastin Celestine. Thank you so much, Mr. Celestine, to be with us today. Are you there? <laughs> hey, hey, is that, you, can you know, an anonymous speaker once said that you are only one decision away from changing your entire life. And I know this to be true. You see, I grew up in one of the roughest neighborhoods in Miami, Florida. And some of you might know it, it's called Liberty City. I'm talking about a neighborhood where the average life expectancy of someone that looked like me was only 16 years old. I mean, you can get killed walking down the wrong street. You step on someone's shoes, forget the apology. That can be your last day on earth. So in a neighborhood like that, you had to be connected. And boy, was I connected. Let me tell you about my friend, Mike. Well, first of all, as a disclaimer, let me say this about Mike. Mike wasn't, Mike wasn't no saint. He didn't always do the right things, nor did he, did he hang around the right crowd. But you know what Mike had? 
that I loved about them, Mike had my back no matter what. If I was being bullied at school, I would call Mike. If I had problems at home, I would call Mike. If I needed someone to talk to, I would call Mike. True story. I remember I rode to the store for my mom, to the corner store for my mom on my brand new 10 speed bike. Some of you don't probably don't even know what a 10 speed bike is. So, yes. so here I am, I go inside the store. I come back out the store, I come back out and my bike is gone. So I ran to Mike's house and I told Mike about what had happened. And could you believe that my bike showed up on my front porch later that afternoon. Now, how many of you, by the show of hands, have somebody in your life that has your back, no matter what? I call them 1 a.m. people. How many of you, show, show me some hands, that you have somebody in your life that has your back no matter what. Doesn't it feel good to have that? Doesn't it feel good to have somebody in your life? Or some of you have a couple of people in your life that you know you can count on. That was Mike for me. Mike was like a brother to me. I still remember one day, Mike came over to the house and we went into the backyard as usual and started doing our little 21s. If you don't know what 21s are, 21s is you start doing your curls, you start doing the curls, you know, 21 different ways. You do three sets of 21s. And we're out there just, you know, back there just joking around and whatnot, just having a good time. And before he left, he asked to borrow one of my t-shirts, one of my favorite t-shirts. And so I let him borrow my t-shirts he threw up the peace sign and he left. And so I walked inside, threw myself on the couch and started watching some, some television. And then the next thing I know, I hear this banging at the door, bang, 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 bang. So my mother starts screaming and, and, and whatnot and uh, telling me to answer the door. I'm running towards the door. I'm like, man, who could this be? knocking at my door and when I open the door it's it's my good my home girl Michelle and 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 she's telling me that Mike has just been shot and killed and and my mom is like no nah, that can't be Mike was just in the backyard with Glastine just a few minutes ago. And so immediately I jump in Michelle's car and she had a few people in there and we jump in and we, we drive to the scene of the crime. And, and you could imagine, you know, the, the helicopters was already there. The police already barricaded blocks and blocks. So we had to park like, two blocks away to even get to the crime scene. And all this time, while I'm walking down this, to this crime scene, I'm hoping that that's not Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it's a, this is a dream. And I'm, and I'm making my way through the crowd and and I, and I come to the yellow tape and I look to my left and there it is, there's Mike on the ground. And something else caught my attention. To, to his right, there was a orange cone with the number 64 on it. 64 meant that Mike was shot 64 times. I still remember the tears running down my face and 
the anger swelling up in me. And I, I just I just couldn't take it anymore. So I so I left the scene to go home alone, to just be alone. I just needed some time alone. A lot of I had a lot of thoughts going through my mind. I probably wandered Miami for hours aimlessly. And I think it was about after 12 midnight that I finally got on my street. And here I am walking down the street and I see this man standing on his front porch. And I know this man to be Mr. D, the neighborhood preacher, the neighborhood good guy, the neighborhood dude that's always looking out for us. And I see him and he sees me and I'm hoping that he doesn't call me because at that moment, I didn't wanna be bothered. I was the wrong person to bother at that moment. And so I get over, I try to get over to the other side of the street and then I hear these words, young man. So I, so I ignore him. And he says, young man, Glastine, you know you heard me. And I turn around and I say, what, what, man? I, I gotta go home, my mom is waiting for me. I, I gotta go, I can't, I, I gotta go, man. And before I could say or do anything after that, I just felt his arms around me. And he said, Glastine, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. You just, you just lost your friend. I heard about it, man. Everybody's talking about it. But you know what? This is forcing you to make a decision, man. Yeah, Mike is gone. Unfortunately, he's gone right now. But truth be told, Mike was following what the rest of these kids in this neighborhood were doing. Plastine, are you gonna keep following what the rest of these kids in the neighborhoods are doing? Skipping school, selling drugs, standing out here by the telephone pole for the until the wee hours of the night. Let me let me tell let me explain something to you, Glastine. The reason why the people in this neighborhood Aren't, get, aren't making it out of here. The reason why the people, the people in this neighborhood, their lives are failing, the reason why they're not taking their lives to the next level is because they're followers. Are you going to be a leader? Are you going to change things around? Are you going to to make it out of here, Glastine. And I remember looking at Mr. D and I said, I'm gonna make it out. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do, but I'm not gonna end up like Mike. And so I would remember that conversation. And, and you know what, truth be told, I, I don't really know if I knew what a leader was back then. I'm 17 years old. But I knew one thing, I knew that I had to get out of there. I knew that I had to take responsibility for my life. I knew that if things didn't change, that I would be lying where Mike was that night. And I thank God every day that Mr. D put me on the path of finding the leader within me. 
So I would remember that conversation and I would go back and Mr. D would talk to me. You know how mentors talk to you, you know? And, and he would make me read books like Think and Grow Rich by, by Napoleon Hill, you know? Awaken the Giant Within by Anthony Robbins. And he would have me listening to CDs like, like you know, featuring Les Brown. You gotta be hungry. I still remember that. And he'll have me listening to Zig Ziglar, See You at the Top. And the more I spoke to Mr. D, the more I began to believe that I could make it out. I went from just trying to survive to having a dream and a mission and a vision for my life. I got so bold, I even applied for college. University. I got accepted graduated top 10% of my class, double major, <laughs> less than five years. Didn't know I had it in me, but I did it. But see, here's what, here's what I want you to understand. Some of you, you've been thinking about taking a chance on yourself. Some of you, you've been thinking about taking a chance, taking your business to the next level, writing that book, being that entrepreneur, writing that, that script, that movie script, producing something, influencing people as a leader, starting that club, starting that organization. You've just been thinking about it. Some of you have been thinking about changing your bodies. You've just been thinking about it. But here's, here's, here, here's something else. Some of you have been thinking about the naysayers. I can see it in your faces. I hear from you guys every day. Mama told me that I couldn't do this. The teacher said that I couldn't do this. The coach said that I, that I would never amount to anything. My daddy said. This person said, my friends don't believe in me. Some of you are still believing in the naysayers. But let me tell you what I know. The people that take a chance on themselves, the people that take their businesses to the next level, become entrepreneurs, influencers, whatever you want to name that, the people that write the books, the people that become the actor, those people, those people that don't listen to the naysayers because they, 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 they have an inner focus. They're driven from what's inside, from what they see inside, that vision that they built for them from the inside. Those people are called leaders. Ah, that's a new word, huh? Yeah, get that in your subconscious mind. Those people are called leaders. So I ask you today the same questions that Mr. D asked me. Are you going to be a leader? Are you going to turn things around in your life, in your business, in your family, in your community? Are you going to have that impact? Are you going to get out from where you are today, unstuck from where you are today to where you wanna to be tomorrow? And that's all I wanted to tell you. Thank you.
that was amazing um yeah a little speechless no words for that uh first of all sorry i'm so sorry for what happened but something that i realized on you that i see on you is your strength like how how capable you were you know to overcome those situations yeah i mean it it was uh to to say it is is very different from living it <laughs> let's put it that way easier said than done yeah i'm glad i'm on this side um telling the story and not reliving it and, and that's amazing because if you wouldn't have you know the chance to move your life from one side to another as you said you probably wouldn't be here right now so i'm really grateful for that i'm really grateful for you know for the great leader that is on you that get out wake up about the situation and now the impact that you're going to provide it'll be a positive one because what is you know what is the main point if you're going to be providing an impact in life when it's going to be something negative something that will affect people something that will affect your community i think that that will not be an impact and what are you doing is something amazing what are you providing is you know priceless and thank you so much for that thank you so much it's just amazing Man, I just want to say, you know, I thank you for um, for you guys, you know, that's provided this platform so I can, you know, tell my story that I can share, you know, my story with, you know, with the uh, with your with your group, uh, with your organization. Really appreciate it. Um, it's always fun to be able to come in and share my story with other like minded people. It makes it a lot easier. People get it. Um, I mean, my story is something that um, I think um, that will, it, it kind of it kind of uh, uh, sits in your mind for a long time. I mean, you'll be thinking a year from now, you'll remember. <laughs> Man, I remember when Glastine told me this and um, because I wanted to be, I want somewhat, some, you know, you take, everyone takes a certain, piece of that story and they run with it and i want to say this you know take as many pieces as you like and do run with it produce it and when you produce when you produce something or you have a comment or a thought on that you know hit me up dm me email me do whatever and so i can hear um what what did i say to to touch your heart you know i i i i that makes my day to hear things like that. So I'm, I'm very grateful for this platform. Thank you so much. And we fully appreciate you. And the best thing in here is that many people could relate. Many people, you know, might, uh, as my experience, many people can follow, you know, maybe not great leaders that they're going to trigger, you know, these type of bad experiences. One more time, as I said, they're going to provide a, a, an impact that it will be negative at the end. So in base of all this amazing story, we're going to start with a Q&A session. So anything that you guys have, this is a time that you guys can ask, you guys can engage, you guys you know, can provide more value and, and make this interaction for this platform. Because remember, we're going to be a legacy. We're constructing a community in which we're, our hearts and our doors are completely open for, for all leaders, all leaders, all communities, internationals. So let's get it. We wanna do not come at once as our CEO says, Angel Roman. <laughs> any type of question, any type of interaction, any type of feedback. Can I say something before anybody else go? Go ahead, of course, it's a pleasure to hear you. Yeah, I wanna say this. Um, one of the things that I found that when people are in platforms like this, um, people kind of get shy. Um, but we're talking about leadership. This is the place where you get to you get to explore who you are as a leader. Are you a leader that sits in the back and just and just let things happen? No, I don't think so. Because if if you were, you wouldn't be here. And this is the this is the safe environment where you get to just stand up and and be heard and be seen. Every time you have an opportunity to ask a question, every time you have an opportunity to ask someone like me a question, someone that's been like 13 years in the Pentagon, working with the FBI, building teams, anytime you get to ask 
to ask someone like me a question, ask. Because you never know when you'll have that opportunity again. Because that question that you're waiting for someone else to ask may not be asked and you lose. So that's a reflective because how you do anything as a leader is how you do everything. And that's true. If you stand back and not say anything, you're going to do that to your team. You're going to do that to your family. You're going to do that to your friends. You're going to just stand back and let life pass you by. But if you start standing up right now in this environment, start showing up as a leader in this environment, I promise you, if you continue doing that, you will be the leader that you want to be. Amazing. So, well, I'm going to make small, you know, questions since to break the ice. Wait, so, can I, I have a question? Oh, go for it. Go for it. Okay. Um... How did you get started like in your business? Um, could you say your name so I can, so I can just. Um, uh, my name is Melissa. Okay. All right, Melissa. Okay. Oh yeah, I see it. It's in these small letters down there. Okay. Hey, Melissa. Yeah. Uh, are you talking about my entrepreneurial business or, or my, my, uh, my nine to five? Um, your entrepreneurship business. How okay. did it like um, start? Because I came in a little late, so I, did, I wasn't here in the first part. Okay. Um, we, didn't, we didn't talk about business. We talked about my story of how I got to be here, where, where I started in Miami, in Liberty City, where it was uh, someone murdered uh, my best friend. And from that, I had an opportunity um, to listen to, to and to build a relationship with a man called Mr. D that, that forever changed my life. That relationship last, lasted about 10 years of him grooming me, of him getting, getting me to understand because, you know, we can be hard headed when, you, when you're growing up in a hard environment, gang activity where, you know, you're always, you know, you're always on. You know, you're always waiting for the next thing to happen, to be prepared to, to um, uh, so you can so you can live another day. Like in my community, the average um, life expectancy of someone that looked like me was only 16 years old. And so it was from building that relationship with Mr. D that gave me books to read, like Think and Grow Rich and, um, you know, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Awaken the Giant Within, just so many, a plethora of books I read. Uh, so many books that um, even in high school I didn't even read one book. Um, but when he when I when I when I got with him, um, he kind of um, just uh, it just made me read those books. I mean, he was adamant about that um, that I had to change my mind if I wanted to change my world. Um, like I said before, uh, when I when I began the speech, um, one decision can change your entire life. It not only it changed my entire life, it changed my whole entire family's life. You know, I went to college, I got into college, I graduated, you know, top 10% of my class with double major, one in computer information system and one in uh, business administration. And so uh, it's just a testament to what a relationship, what uh, strategic, and not strategic in my part, strategic in the sense that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I didn't know I was ready. I was just walking down the block and this guy, you know, one of my neighbors called me over and it's like, hey, you know what? I want to talk to you. And at first I wanted to ignore him, but, but I didn't. And um, I respected him enough to hear what he had to say, even though I was angry at that time. My friend had just got killed. I didn't know what to do. I was angry. I wanted revenge. And so there was a lot of things going on. And from that, from that relationship, that 10 year relationship from him guiding me through college and making sure, you know, that I, that I go hit into the corporate world at that time. I didn't go into entrepreneurship first um, because what he knew was the corporate world for me. So I went the, the, the corporate way. Uh, that was my way. That was what was best for me at, back then. Now I'm more 
into the entrepreneurial space where I'm coaching um, people like yourself to, to become better leaders to in your business, to you know how, how to navigate those promotional uh, um, um, the waters per se, where, because I find that when you guys come in, um, especially from college, when you guys come in, you guys don't know what you don't know. And it's okay. So I've taken it upon myself to mentor, um, you know, people that are fresh from college and we recruit them sometimes for the FBI. We recruit them and, and um, I just take it upon myself to train them or I'm training somebody that's been in there for a couple of years where um, I'm teaching them, you know, there is a game being played and you need to understand that game. If you want to get promoted, um, you have to understand the game. And like I tell people, um, organization only promote leaders. That's who gets promoted. If you don't understand that, if that's kind of like uh, kind of fuzzy to you, that's why you haven't gotten promoted. Anywhere you go, even in the family, <laughs> you want to take that family to the next level, you have to get, you have to become a leader because organizations, families, communities, whatever you could think of, it runs on leadership. And I hope, I hope that, was, that wasn't too long winded, Melissa. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Thank you. Wonderful. Anyone else? No. Well. Wait. Can I no. can I ask another question? I'm sorry. Of course. Okay. Um, yeah, you're the leader today. You're the leader, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every, everyone else is following your lead right now. That's how powerful this is. Everyone is listening to what you have to say, and they are following your lead. This is what they call influence. This is a, this is a yeah. very important part of leadership. So so always ask questions. Okay, um, my question is, like, do you have any business strategies for like like new incoming entrepreneurs, or like for like people in general that want to get well, into one of my what a, that want to get into your own business. Yeah, or like, or like, yeah, or something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a, a, the strategy that I wish that I had learned before, you know, um, I started my own um, coaching and speaking business. I wish that I would have just gotten coached. I wish I would have gotten, got with a, 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 a coach that understands a business coach that understands how to create a business and walk me through the legalities of business. Meaning that, you know, whatever, if I wanted to do an LLC, if I wanted to do incorporate, I wanted, I, I, I needed it from the ground up, not just go out there and just start a business. I, I, I needed to understand, I needed to read books on business um, acumens and, and I, I wanted to just have somebody there as a coach to walk me through that. If I did not have a coach, I would just buy the books, listen to the podcast and just call in and, and just, just do what you're doing now. Just you know find influencers, DM them, email them and get some information or it's school. School is, a, is best place, you know, counselors to get some information on, hey, who can I connect with to help me build a business? Because it's just not as, as easy as people make it seem. If you wanna build something of substance, and I'm sure that you do, it's just that you just, you, you, you're not an island. It's just find people around you, collaborate and build and build off of each other, learn to, learn to, and one of the biggest things for me is learn to serve the business that you wanna be a part of, be part of somebody else's business first and learn to serve and give them that value and, and watch how they do things. Watch how they their business is built and then go out and build your business. Okay, thank you. Amazing. You're welcome.
Any other question? <clears throat> I have a quick question. Oh, another leader. There's my leader. There he is. I knew I had another leader in here somewhere. Go ahead, leader. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, one. Hmm. So like for me, I, I kind of listening to your story, like it's really interesting because you know, um, I definitely relate when it comes down to understanding that a lot of times it's not always available to us, um, you know, somebody who has a better pathway. So um, I was just kind of wondering, what, what did you say to yourself when you decided, I mean, you, you told us, but like, what, what did you, what would you come back to? What, what would, what would go through your mind? Like, is it just, I can't like, I like you just didn't have a choice. You kind of came back like this, there's no other way. Like a, what, what was it for you? That was a great question, Alex. One of the things for me, it was, it was seeing Mike on the ground. And I kind of woke up in the moment when Mr. D asked me if I wanted to end up like that. And that, that, that was a, I mean, I don't know if anyone ever seen somebody shot up or a dead body, like just right there on the street. It's a, it's, it's something that never leaves you. Like when I tell my story, I'm passionate about that part because it is stuck in my mouth, in my mind. I can see it over and over. I can see it. And the thing that got me the most is my why. Like they, people talk about Simon Sinek. He, he, he came up with a book, you know, um, the why, right. And, and, um, and people always talk about why, you know, your why, you know, is your, is, 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 is where you find your passion and all this stuff. But, but, you know, there's some truth in that. It may sound cliche ish, but there's some truth in that because my why was, I didn't want my mom to see me like that because I know it would kill her. And I was a mama's boy, still am from this day. And I didn't want them to see me like that. I had my brothers and sisters at home. I didn't want them to see me like that, to go out like that. And I remember my brothers and sisters seeing him like that and that it was devastating to them. His brother went crazy and killed himself. So those were, those were some of the impacts that have really touched me where I was like, I'm not, I'm not. Once you find that why, because a man once told me your why makes you cry. And I, and, 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 you know, some people may be like, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does because the thought, the thought of my mom seeing me like that just gave me chills back then. When my mom saw me graduate at Florida Atlantic University, my mom and dad cried. And my dad don't cry. Because they couldn't, they couldn't believe it. That the guy that, you know, my mom would find my guns under my, under my, you know, my, my bed and all this stuff. And that same guy just, one day just from Saul to Paul, because I had made a decision that I was not going to end up like that. I, I raised my standards. I, I, it was a must, it became a must. Once I found my reason, it became a must. And I thank God that Mr. D was there to help me. And that's what, that's what did it for me, that relationship right there did it for me and that's what that's why that's that's what that's what i would think about every day and for a while alex i couldn't go out into the streets i had to stay home mr d had to come to me because i couldn't walk the streets because that's how hot the streets were for me because remember we're we're talking about a, a, a gang we're talking about a crew and i was part of that crew 
So the people that got him, they were looking for me too. Yes, so that uh, my why, having that why that makes you cry, it 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 is is something about that that will that it I mean it just it's like a seed when you bury a seed in the ground, no matter how much dirt, how heavy that dirt is that's on top of it, it's going to break through because it has a why it must grow into a tree. It must grow into that plant. It must grow. And that's what happened to me. It's, it's very interesting that you say that because a lot of times when, it, when, um, when people um, interact with others in relationships and, you know, either friends or, or just, um, you know, um, relationships in general, <laughs> Sometimes they'll come to a point where they they felt wronged, you know, and they say never again, you know, they they say never again. They hold themselves to a higher standard. It's really interesting hearing that. Yeah, once you once you really get to the point of just this 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 right here, this right here this is not going to happen to me again, or I'm not going to stay here anymore. I'm not going to live like this anymore. I'm not going to live. Once you get that inside of you, because if you don't have that inside of you, that, that you won't even go anywhere. You won't even try. And if you try, you do it haphazardly. You do it, you know, you're going to be lax of days ago, weak hand about it, kind of weak hand about it. But once you get to that point where you tired, where you tired of dodging bullets, were you tired of your friends dying, going to funerals every Saturday, especially in the summertime, where one summer, 13 of your friends died? Like for me standing right here, out of 10 friends that I grew up with, nine of them are dead. I am the only one. Once you get into situations like that, you change your life. Trust me. So, you, so people could play around with it all they want and be like, oh, you know what? I want my life to become better. And I want, I want this and I want to, you know, I want a great family. I want to live a great life. I want to be an entrepreneur. Show me. And I could, I, I could just talk to you in, 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 about, in about four seconds and know if you really want that. Because all I have to do is know your why. That's awesome, last team. Thank you so much for sharing a very personal story to us. Um, you mentioned a lot of books, and I actually wanted to ask you which one is your favorite? What is your favorite book? My favorite book is by John Maxwell, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. That's my favorite all-time books because that's the foundation. If you don't understand the foundations of leadership, it's, it's kind of hard to to understand the, the 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 you know why leaders are doing things or what to look for in a leader if you don't understand those foundation the foundation of leadership so the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership by john maxwell is one of my favorites my next my next favorite book is um by far um the Alchemist by um, Pablo Coelho is my is one of my favorite, and for for my entrepreneurs out there, Rich Dad Poor Dad is my favorite um, book that that got me that got me thinking. Hey, you know what? I don't have to I don't have to do a nine to five <laughs> all my life. You know, I could go into business um, for myself, and that's what got me thinking. And you know, by Robert Kiyosaki. I mean, yo, those books. If you're if you're into leadership get the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership and and the uh and another book by dale carnegie uh it's called um how to how to win friends and influence people those two books have those two books as your staple leadership books they will get you far in life 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, of course, you know, we're going to have the staple. Those of us that want to be rich out there, we're going to have, you know, thinking grow rich by Napoleon Hill. Of course, we're going to have that. Of course, we're going to have, you know, Awaken a Giant Within by Anthony Robbins. Of course, Les Brown wrote a book. You got to be hungry right now. Get his book. That's my mentor. I know Les Brown personally. If you ever see him say, hey, do you know Glassine? He's going to say yes. That guy, he could talk your ears off. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, yeah. So those are my those are my recommendations. But the two staples for leadership is how to win friends and influence people by Dale uh, Dale Carnegie and John Maxwell book, The Twenty One Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Awesome, thank you. And we asked a question in the chat. It says, "Do you think you will be who you are right now and where you are?" in your life if you wouldn't have lost your friend? I would be dead because that would, my friend would have been me because I was always, you know, I was always that guy that would go because me and my friends in the streets, we made a pact that we would die for one, for one another. And we didn't have expectancies of living that long. It just never, it just, it was just something that, you know, um, we, we wanted to live life to the fullest until we died. And like, we, we never had ambitions to live past 19. We just never had, it just never came to our minds that we knew we was going to die because that's the life that we chose. Oh, thank you, Glass Tim. That's, that's real right there. And uh, I know we have about two minutes left. Alexis or uh, Richard, do you want to go ahead and move forward with the close? Yeah, sure. I would just like to, well, once again, say thank you so much, uh, Celestine. I really appreciate your, your we, we fully appreciate your presence in here, your, your value, your this transition that you're sharing with us. We fully appreciate it. And some other hand, um, I'm sorry, everyone, for the small, you know, delay that we had. And well, at least we have this amazing value tonight. So hopefully this was really impactful for everyone, for every single of you. If some of you, I don't know, maybe you guys don't have, you know, clearly your path of life or you guys are not, you know, really correct. Like what is the best decision? What is the best decision? So this is the best. So I would like to introduce a small member in here. A small leader right here, real quick. Say hi. hi. <laughs> So for, 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 for small kids like them, I'm here. For, for, for small toddlers like, like him, I'm here because I have my experiences as well and I don't want them to have the same ones. Anything that you would like to ask, Brady, Alexis? Oh well, yeah, I was just gonna um, give a shout out to um, the EOL uh, chapter at CSUDH. Um, they've just been putting so much work in. We just uh, we just got accepted by um, OSL, I believe. So just you know, great work, guys. Uh, you guys put on so much. Just put your hearts into it, and just want to you know celebrate them. Yes, of course, because that's the main point. You know, if like well, as I always say, is live with your heart. Do everything with your heart. That that's the main point. That's how you're gonna reflect. You know, what, the, the the change that you want to do, the impact that you want to do. Just exactly as Mr. Glass indeed, just exactly like him. Awesome. At the end of the night, let's call this event to an end. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Glastin. Go follow Glastin on IG. His um, Instagram is exactly his name, Glastin. He's also on LinkedIn if you want to check that out. And um, everyone, have a wonderful night. Have an amazing one. The saddest part of the day, but see you next Thursday, guys. My yeah, um, hit, hit me up on hit me up on YouTube. I would appreciate um, if people hit me up on YouTube because that's where um, most of my content is located on YouTube and IG. Amazing, we'll be there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, my crew. Have an amazing one. Have a great day. Stay safe. Okay. Thank you so much.